Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, new The Bridge Writers today. Uh, we are having the pleasure of introducing Luciana Lavour, and she is going to discuss with us a very, very relevant subject, which is seriexological self-positioning and writing, of course, because it's all about writing in the end. <laughs> right? <laughs> so let me introduce uh, Luciana to you. Luciana Lavour is an economic sciences graduate with a post in marketing administration. She acts as a course and events coordinator for the education sector. She has been a consensiology volunteer since 2003 and a consecutive volunteer since its foundation in 2014. She is a teacher specialized in sediexology, I would say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a panther practitioner, a photographer, a new encyclopedist, and uh, the organizer of the book, uh, First Mnemonic Gala, Illustrated History. So let me give to you, give it to you, uh, take it from here. Thank you, Liliana. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here today. Thank you for the audience. I want to thank Isaac, especially Liliana, for all support. Very well. Very well. <laughs> uh, this lecture is both a challenge and an opportunity. It's allowing me to be in touch with a specialized team of intraphysical and extraphysical helpers. So thank you very much for the opportunity. Well, uh, today we will talk to, uh, about serexological self-positioning. So we will discuss about research context, definition, categories, practical application, taxology, themes, instruments, and next steps. Well, during all the presentation, I will use examples to explain better the idea. So I need to be clear that these examples are my interpretation about them. So please use your critical thinking, right? And up to here, I'm sure you are thinking that I'm English, uh, that English is my uh, mother language, but it's not, please. <laughs> so let us know if I say something strange because the Isaac team will help us, right? <laughs> so please, thank you for the comprehensive. And also feel free to question anytime, okay? So let's start. Um, how did this research start? Um, it started with the first mnemonic gala, which was our first group red cognitive lab which is not a costume party or playful event. Although, as you can see, every participant was dressing like a personality from a past era. Well, with this event, a group retrocognitive technique was born in which throughout social and mnemonic de-repression, the extra physical helpers could revive the memories of those involved. It would provide meetings of groups and evocation of concepts to be assisted. It was a very interesting uh, event. Since the announcement of the event until months after it, after it was held, the Mnemonic Gala was a subject in everywhere. Mini lectures, parapsychic dynamics, course from many CIs, hallway conversations. It was the topic of chats in social meetings of consensiology volunteers. And even in the city, everyone talked about the event. So can you imagine? Uh, at that time, uh, when we were organizing the event, the consecutive team needed to collect the participants' information about occupation, historical period and region or country, each one would be would represent in the event because each one would be announced by a herald when he or she entered in the banquet room. So 
I was part of the data collection, uh, data collection team, and people's reaction were very different. From some, it was very easy to give the data. For others, they felt a great discomfort. So I started to ask myself, well, why is it hard for them to self-position in themselves? Why they never thought about it if serexology is a pillar of conscienciology, right? Well, uh, I was so involved with the event and serexological research that, that I didn't understand some reaction at that time. But uh, one day I was leaving uh, Tertuliario and I saw a group of people talking about their own self-positionings. And I've started to see extra physically what the necessity of self-positioning was causing in terms of multidimensional repercussion. And that was the seed of start to understand my relationship with the topic, with my seri series of lives, my pro acts, and my own self-positionings. So I decided to write a chapter about serexological self-positioning in the book that registered the first mnemonic gala. Now you can see the book and Harold. So it was very interesting, uh, this uh, opportunity. And the moment the announcement by the heralds generate repercussion for both, for those who were announced and for those that were in the room. So it was a very special uh, moment to all involved in the, in the event, right? Um, after the book was published, I continued studying the subject, identifying my own uncomfortable positionings. So since then, I'm giving lectures, course. I wrote a verbiage for an encyclopedia of conscienciology, and I'm writing a book about serexological self-positioning. The definition, uh, serexological self-positioning is the act or of a consign assuming both in terms of theory and practice, intimately and publicly, their own commitment and or multi-existential representativeness in a particular group, context, country, or social movement of the past. The research development brought more facets about serexological self-positioning. For example, as you can see, the definition proposed is a conscious positioning, right? About what you already know around your lifetimes. But by the time I saw that until we get lucidity about our past lives, we already have serexological self-positioning, although intuitively. So now I propose two categories of serexological self-positioning, conscious and unconscious. Okay, uh, let's see some examples to understand better. Uh, unconscious serexological self-positioning, when the person does not appear to have or does not express lucidity about their past lives, but still guided by, by the circumstance and energetic repercussions, he or she choose to exercise an evolutionary positioning, promoting reflection and group karmic recovery from himself or herself and for other involved consciousness. Let's see an example. Um, the Lost Museum, the Nazi conspiracy to steal the world's greatest work of art, the author Hector Feliciano narrates how he came to the theme and the repercussions of the book when it was published. In consequence of the book, an art, uh, an art gallery filed a lawsuit against him. Some museums and galleries around the world have returned stolen work that were in their hold 
So we can see his moral authority on this issue, which makes me think that he was involved in this situation in the past. I'm not sure in which side he was, but I think he was involved with it, right? I don't know if it makes sense for you, but for me, I it's very interesting to think about it. And the category we are looking to have, the conscious serexological self-positioning, when the consing has lucidity of a certain fact from the past and is compelled to act in the present life in order to improve the tracts left, qualifying the balance of personal evolutionary record. Let's see an example. Uh, in the introduction of the book Serexology, Multi-Existential Lucid Evolution, Pedro Fernandes, that's here with us, <laughs> brings, if the hypothesis of have been Emily Littre in my last life is correct, the content of the ideas presented in this book can be taken into account for the revision, reparation, and expression, expansion of concepts defended by that positivist physician of the time. So in this example, we can see a conscious serexological self-positioning because Pedro already has a hypothesis about his past life, right? Another example, uh, Luciano Mello presented his serexological research on the bridge researchers and show how his studies, research, and publications are a type of rewriting and continuity of his past experiences. In Luciano's presentation, we can see the crescendo from unconscious to conscious serexological self-positioning. So I invite you to watch or re-watch these uh, bridge, bridge uh, researchers, right? <laughs> Um, do we think about the importance of evolutionary positionings? This orthopensata brings to us a good reflection. There are people today, even at the Tertulliarium, volunteers in conscientious-centric institutions who could be in the Pertus one millennium ago, but foolishly prefer to repeat useless lives and experience, alone or in groups, in Judaism, in the church, in feudalism, in monarchy, in politics, in literature, or in ancient crafts. In this sense, we can begin the historical research of holobiographies of consensiology volunteers, that's of the consecutive personalities closest to us. So if we want to accelerate our evolution, uh, evolution, it's time to review our choice and positionings and stop our mimicry, right? So the proposal is accelerate the evolutionary process, exercising conscious serexological self-positioning. The most lucidity we have from the past, the more we can accelerate our evolutionary process. So it's the time to practice uh, our evolution, right? And how we can maximize our holobiography lucidity, doing retrocognitive self-research, identifying serexological self-location, increasing multi-existential self-awareness, having serexological self-positioning. Everything starts with the retrocognitive self-research. So let's go ahead and let's go do it, right? Luciana, may I, may I have yeah. a question? Of course. So I was thinking, because I understand that if you have lucidity of who you were in the past, okay. so probably you, you know more or less the things you've done and you don't want to do it everything again, right? Uh -huh. But on the other hand, 
I also feel that sometimes you access something from the past that it's very strong and ends up like having this gravitational field and you want to do that again because it was maybe so good, so pleasurable, or you were an important person or whatever mm -hmm. is the mm -hmm. situation. So how do you deal with these two things? One thing is to have lucidity and say, okay, I need to evolve. I need to, or continue in a, in a, in a direction that is less, I don't know, less religious or less power based mm -hmm. or whatever, but without being pulled into that particular life that sometimes was so good that I want to do it. <laughs> everything again you know what i mean <laughs> yes i know <laughs> well i'm starting to write a very bit for of for the encyclopedia uh, telling you right uh, exactly this <laughs> how you don't be a wonder with your your best lives right well you need to think about the evolution uh, the evolution right if you know that it was very nice, okay, but now you have, you, you participate uh, for an um, intermissive course and you wrote some goals to you, right? And you, I think if that's you, the watershed, right? The intermissive course is a big watershed, you know, divide. Yes, up. yes, so. I think so. <laughs> I think so. It's the same. Uh, well, you like your teenagers group, right? They are re <laughs> really fun. They are really enjoyable. But well, today your your goals, your objectives are different from them. You like them but right. you are not around them every time because your your values are different now right so it's the same if we think about our past lives and well it was very nice it was good it's uh it's enjoyable but it's not to me anymore uh you um, I remember the Valdus, um, um, he, he, he told once, it's not to me anymore. It's, oh, not, it's not to me. me. It's not for yes, me. Yes, it's uh, not for me, you know? So I think it's, it is. You need to open hand from something to go ahead and accelerate your process, your evolutionary process. Because so, so perhaps, perhaps your are... technique is to really try to recover the experiences in your intermissive course. Yes. To yes. fixate, right? The new you and the, not new... the yes. old you. Yes. Even that, that, uh, that last experience is part of you, right? Yeah, of course. Right? Of course. But is not part of your priorities now. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think this is the, the biggest difference to sing yeah, and to me, go ahead. It, so sorry if, I, if I'm talking too much, please. No, no, you it's can, okay. Because for me, it's interesting that when you access a previous life, there are mm -hmm. a lot of things that you can get from that life. Yeah. They are very valuable today. If you were a great writer, like, like Littre, right? Yes. Who wrote and, uh, a dictionary so you can get all of those uh strong traits strong all traits of, yes all, all that part of you that is really valuable mm -hmm. but sometimes obviously it comes other <laughs> other things come together you know what i yes. mean <laughs> <laughs> yes. it was that easy to, oh i'm just gonna pick up the things that are great and i'm gonna leave all the things that are bad behind right sometimes it's not that yes. simple and clean but uh, this is the intelligence of this. You take the, the strong traits, the strong traits, and you overcoming the magic traits, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So 
Uh, oh, it's thank okay? You. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Okay. So, um, let's see. So, better understand the topic and get inspired. Let us, uh, let's follow in the taxology or a didact uh, didactic classification of serexological self-positioning. Uh, we talk about focus that could be peripheral or megafocal, uh, characteristics, recompositive, reciprocitive, recyclogenic, uh, expression uh, could be implicit or explicit, uh, sphere, egocarmic, duocarmic, group karmic, polycarmic, and dimension could be intraphysical or extraphysical positionings and perpetuity, fleeting or uh, long lasting. We will have some um, examples ahead, each one, all right? Let's start with peripheral serexological self-positioning. As the researcher identifies themes or postures that lack personal positioning, it's possible to act proactively, promoting recycling and assistance. So uh, let's see an example. Deepening uh, serexological self-research with a view to recycling and group karmic reconciliation based on the identification of the predominant holotocenes. These are my predominant holotocenes, trade, politics, work, that I identified from my retrocognitive self-research. And you can ask, oh, how, how could you find these predominant holotocenes? Well, we have techniques to, to do this research. And of course, you can see your present life and looking for what the, situa the situations uh, shows you from the past. Um, if you want to understand better the, the retrocognitive research, I invite you to participate on the third International Week of Conscienciology in August, when Consecutives and Isaac will be in partnership presenting a course. But just to, to understand this, this example, even if the holotothenes don't, don't show me a specific time of my holobiography, I have, start, I have a start point to research. For example, if I have some informations in my present life that make me think I have a relationship with politics, for example, I can ask myself, how can I help to improve actions related to politics? Well, I can work to improve the ethical or cosmoethical level, for example, is a kind of reconciliation with this holotocenes. Even if in this case, I'm not sure what I did, when I did it, where I did something related to politics in the past, but I already have enough information that's point me in, in this direction. So we are groping and observing the results and go ahead. So I will do other examples in this way to make it clear, all right? Uh, about megafocal serexological self-positioning. The specific megafocal self-positioning, which goes straight to the point, acting in overcoming the Gordian knot of the consciousness in the megawick trait maintained throughout lifetime with is the focus of the fundamental clause of the proaxis. So uh, to think about this example, uh, in the book, Where Does Religion End? The author explains that the reason why he chose the subtitle of introduction showing the synthesis of mega recycling carried out in the current lifetime. 
Marcelo titled the book Introduction, Itinerary of Mind Out of God, making a parody with the title of the medieval work Itinerary of the Mind into God, written by Franciscan, uh, Franciscan Boaventura Bognareggio. And he comments that the book represents the explanation of the reason for the author's the conversion, the beginning of a new stage of life in which the objective is conscientious re-education, the task of unlearning the mistakes and fallacies taught in the past. So seems to be its right of in the focus of his fundamental clause of the ProEx, right? So we can do this exercise to find and uh, rewrite uh, our, our history, right? About the characteristic, the sexological self-position uh, could be restored, uh, recompositive, a lucid self-positioning with focus on a group retratations and compensations. Uh, a good example is the Bridget Writers number six last December, where uh, Dulce Dow presents good examples about restorative rewriting. So we can use our publications in a restorative way. And I really recommend watch or rewatch this video. Uh, about reciprocity or giving back serexological self-positioning. In, let me see an example, okay. Eliana Manfroy in her book, Consciential Antioastage, wrote in the chap chapter self-responsibility, uh, responsible uh, reciprocity is the act or effect of a consciousness answering for pre-evolutionary contributions, inputs, and gains they received by means of recognition, gratitude, return of personal patrimony, and intrasistence to others. In this chapter, uh, she mentions volunteering as a way to reciprocity. So if a volunteer received us in Conscienciology. Why not to be a volunteer now and welcome the new intermissives? So it's sometimes it's uh, simple things that we do that could be a, a self-positioning, you know, a evolutionary self-positioning. So it's interesting we think about it and do some exercising uh, in this way, okay? Uh, recyclogenic self-positioning, sexological self-positioning, self-decisions that impact on the personal evolutionary course, overcoming mega breaks, such as mega retreat, promoting intraconsciential recycling, triggering a clear change in the evolutionary level. Um, Stanley Took Williams III is a rich example of sexological uh, so self-positioning. After promoting existential mega recycling from being a gang leader to being nominated to the Nobel Peace Prize in the same life, I think uh, maybe this, this life is his life, his last life is a critical life in his evolutionary uh, series, right? His life was studying existential balance three years ago, and it's really interesting. He wrote many books before he died, reteaching what he thought wrong in his life. So it's interesting to think about this, this example. Let's see about expressions, uh, expression of sexological self-positioning. Could be implicit, a silent self-positioning, but authentically expressed in postures, choice, and manifestations. Well, 
In principle, uh, all conscienciological books express to some degree sexological self-positioning, giving the experience of the conscientious paradigm, right? Although the priority motivation for reading maybe have other reasons, some books shows updating of ideas and postures of the past, configuring uh, group karmic group composition. An example, Pedro again, as he is here, so <laughs> when Homo Lexicographers was published, Pedro didn't mention his hypothesis of consecutive personality of Emily Littré. But in the book present, book's presentation, he wrote, the works in general reflects the author, the work denounces the author, the work unfolds the author. In this way, any books is an autobiographical gestation in greater or lesser percentage. So he didn't talk about his hypothesis, but he left a footprint, right? Pedro, if you don't agree, please let us know. You are here, right? <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's see about explicit sexological self-positioning. Well, the positioning expressed in an open, public way, making clear the personal point of view, its motivations and intentions. Let's go ahead. Let's go again to the my holo uh, predominant holotone themes. Uh, as I showed before, these are my predominant holotone themes. So. If I have relationship with trade, work, politics, we, co we can combine the holotocenes to find other points. For example, if I combine trade and work, one possibility is I was involved with slave, slavery. So I choose to go uh, to represent an abolitionist in the first mnemonic gala. Here you can see Andre Silva and I represented the couple Charles Francis Adams and Abigail Brooks Adams, Americans, uh, an American couple abolitionists, right? So uh, do you remember that I, I told we are grouping and uh, looking the, the results is like this, we think, we make a hypothesis and you go to doing something and feeling what the uh, what is the repercussion if right? you know all the repercussions will bring yes. <laughs> further little details to follow up your research and you yes, know, go exactly. deeper gradually. yes exactly uh, about the spheres uh, of sexological self-positioning it could be ego karmic, uh, intimate decisions, choices, and postures based on sexological self awareness, defining a new evolutionary level. So um, there, there is a verb in the Encyclopedia of Conscienciology that elucidates this theme very well. Cosmoethical self ultimatum is the final end irrevocable personal decision of a pentapratictioner consign of permanently abolishing corruptions, conflicts, tricks, subterfuges, a priorisms, fantasies, and ectotic egotism still remaining in daily self-manifestation. So it's the time that you, okay, it's enough. I will go ahead and we, we really choice to go further, right? So uh, some examples about this application of the INVEX, application of RESEX, assumption of idle strong traits, development of absent trait, option for the uh, self the intrusion, overcoming weak traits, especially mega weak traits. So uh, in the course, uh, we, we work with a lot of other examples. So it's, it's interesting we think what make we 
stay in the same stage, evolutionary stage, right? So we need to go ahead to do another step. About duocarmic sexological self-positioning. On the one hand, the intimate uh, willingness to overcoming obstacles that prevent the development of a health and productive sexual affective relationship based on the evolutionary dual technique. On the other hand, the assumption of the group's rearrangements of the evolutionary dual in view of joint karmic balance left from past lives. So an example very nice is uh, Reinalda in the, in the book Caminhos da Autosperação. Unfortunately, we doesn't have in English, right, Liliana? <laughs> the author presents the moment she decides for a sexual affective relationship. At 53 years of age, one year before having contact with ideas of conscienciology, I intimately decide to assume a partner to share interests, values, affection, in short, support and assistance to one another. At this moment, I thought it was selfish not to have someone to share and offer so much good that I had in me. So it's never late to start, right? So I, I like this example. I think it's very nice. Um, person, uh, ser, uh, about group karmic sexological self-positioning. I divided in three parts, in three time, types. A personal, corporate, and Luciana, national. Luciana, sorry. Yes, can, yes. Can I just uh, in interrupt you? There is a question yeah. for you Come that on. you may wish to comment sure, sure, uh, sure. at this moment. It's uh, coming from uh, Wagner Strachicini. Okay. Uh, he says, Luciana, would you consider a non-cosmoethic attitude if a person who is almost certain about some seriexological condition decides to hold out on someone, even in private environment, for instance, from the CI consecutivos, um, what would be a more appropriate approach considering the benefit for friends or public? It depends on free will. Uh, I will re, re read here. Okay. For understand better. Okay. I didn't understand um, the, the, the Wagner, question. Wagner, you can so, open your mic and, yes. and, uh, and explain better what you, what you wish to know. Hold out, uh, hold out on, on someone. It's kind of hold out instead of being open. Is that what you okay. mean? Okay. Uh-huh. Uh, you, uh, you are asking. Can I, can okay. I, say, can I say Portuguese? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I oh. think so. I don't know. Yes. Can can I, Liliana? Your your microphone. Okay, we will have to translate because we have here people okay. from, the, yes. from different countries. Oh, okay. Let, let let me try to say in English. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, uh, the idea of the, my question is uh, about cosmoethics. Okay. Okay. For, for, for example, one person is about almost sure, because we, we are not never 100% <laughs> sure, but... Yeah, okay. But, but, but she has a hypothesis that she was someone... Okay, in, uh, in, in past. A, in, uh, in a past a, life, yeah. In past life. Okay. So... Uh, Let's see. She would uh, esconder o jogo. I okay. Said, yeah, I she mean, would. Yeah. <laughs> not I mean, manifest. Not not manifest yeah. about what he or she not already knows. Okay. So, but if she, if the person decides not to manifest in public, okay, it could be 
not appropriate. I don't know if is that a, a cosmoetic or not, because mm -hmm. if 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 that person uh, put that information in public, uh, mm -hmm. could be more benefit for many people than she hold the person holds the person for itself, for example. Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. oh, I understood. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think, Luciana? Yeah, what is so your view? My we doubt. Also... My yeah. doubt is, is I know it depends a lot of factors. I know. I know. I'm aware of, about that. Yes. It what would be a, a more appropriate approach? Oh. Uh, so hold hold out the information only for her. Nobody will know. Never. Or let's say a, a midterm, she share <laughs> some uh, close friends or from the uh, CI consecutive, consecutive okay. for instance. I understood now, I understood. Okay, well, let, let's see, what, what do you think, Luciana? What's your view? Wagner, I think more than do, uh, more than talk in public, in public about the, the hypothesis is what he or she does with the information himself, herself, and to others, right? Is more than um, say, well, I was somebody, you know, but what the people, the person is doing with this information, he or she is writing, he or she is doing uh, uh, self-positionings, uh, reteaching what the personality from the past thought wrong. He, he or she- Because the is, whole idea is about recycling and yes, inter assistance. That's what exactly. matters the most. How yes. will I better assist others, Told, right? And uh, tell, if I recycle Yes, tell who were. It's, it's a part of the, the process. Just if in the case is uh, an example, for example, you know, but if it's just say, well, there are many people who said and doesn't uh, change anything in her or, or him life. So it's not the, the, the point. The point is what you do with a evolutionary uh, process, with the person, the evolutionary process, with this, this, uh, with the knowledge that you already have, yes. right? What you do with that? You know? Yes. What are you I doing think, with it? Well, I think it is but, right. But uh, I'm not thinking only, for example, and uh, not to for the curiosity point of yes. view mm -hmm. for other people, but for the benefit. Yes. For other people learn about that yes. information. That's the it's, point. It's exactly what we are doing in the consecutives, right? But the people, the, the person needs to, to have this, uh, this process itself. Because if there isn't, uh, you, you, you don't... Uh, the, the example was not good because the people, are, the person is not doing nothing with it. So yeah. I and think the have, best you do can do, many. yes, I think you, the best we can do, you can do is invite the person to study and study more, go deeper in the self-research because sometimes we uh, identify and how well, stay like this, just in, uh, in superfer superfer uh, superficial, 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 superficial yeah. right? Because the process <laughs> uh, research is the, the really important in the going deeper, the development uh, evolutionary. So I, I really invite you to invite he or everyone, she everyone, everyone to, yeah. to do it, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I hope to ask. May, yeah, may I talk a little bit about my, about my process? Maybe it will yes. help. Yes. Uh -huh. Because I think I think the process of studying a personality from the past is a process, right? 
Yes. So, for example, it's really hard for you to know 100% if you were or not that particular personality. So it always starts with you thinking, no, that's impossible. So <laughs> you really, in the beginning, you don't want to tell anybody because you think, no, it's ridiculous. I'm not going to say that to anybody. And that you choose one person that you say, okay, I'm going to tell that person that it's <laughs> right. That's what I did with you, Luciana. So I yes. told only Luciana about my hypothesis because I knew that she would understand me without any criticism, right? And so I advanced in the research and advanced in the research to the point that I had so much information that I needed to share with more people more than only Luciana. So I, I asked Pedro, Pedro, can I, can I please uh, have a conversation with you? Because I have all of this information, but I'm still very insecure about sharing this with other people. What if I'm, I have nothing to do with the person? What if I'm, uh, what do you say in Portuguese, viajando na maionese? What, what <laughs> if I'm inventing all of this in my mind, right? And then I, I, that's what I would do. I would sit with people who really understand of self uh, research, especially regarding uh, past lives of consecutive personalities. And they will kind of guide you and say, look, I think you need more information or do more, more self research. Oh, you have these things in your research that still need to, to be improved in order for you to go in public and say something. But I got to the point that I had so much that Pedro said, Luciano, I think you should just open up, go and give a colloquium because during the colloquium, other people will give you feedback. Other people mm -hmm. will say, oh, but there's a hole in your, in your presentation. Yeah, but you didn't say this. So, so I think it's a process. And I think the process needs to be respected because it's not that simple for you to go in public and just say something that what if it's there's nothing to do with that right exactly so i don't know if it was helpful <laughs> but, thank yeah. you <laughs> but go talk to people who really understand how uh, the, the the this this uh there's a specific field of contentology Go Thank talk you. to Luciana, go talk to Pedro, <laughs> go talk to someone in Consecutivas who really gives courses about this. They will let you know if you need much more information or not. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I am okay with the clarifications. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dad. It's the question. <laughs> <We think. laughs> Let's move on then. Let's move on. Uh, well, about personal group of karmic. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, the personal group of karmic sexological self-positioning, uh, recognition and rescue of consciousness that makes up the coexistence group throughout many lifetimes. In the case, self-positioning goes throughout intra and extra physical exemplarism, bringing the group to a higher le level of reflection and receiving by clear task on learning what was thought wrong in the past and by updating anachronistic Im images of long-term evolutionary companions. Let's see an example. Um, knowing about my relationship with slavery in the past, I proposed a course tackling abolitionism and sexology expanding the assistance to these holotocines and holotocin and the conscientiousness involved with it. So you can see that I'm really motivated to reconciliation with the slavery uh, holotocin, right? <laughs> um, another example, corporate recognition and recovery with consciousness or group that have been harmed and or neglected in the company's trajectory. Um, an example is George Washington University in Washington, D.C., that in 1838, 
Jesuits linked to the university sold 272 slaves, included, including men, women, and children to plantations in Louisiana. The Almond raised guaranteed the survival of the university, one of the top 20 universities in the USA. In 2016, they announced that they would facilitate the admission of the descendants of the slaves sold in the 19th century. So it's not common to see this kind of serexological self-positioning, right? So I feel very happy when I see examples like these, the uh, business, uh, the corporate examples. So it's very interesting. And also we have the national serexological self-positioning. Recognition and recovery with consciousness or groups that have been harmed and or neglected in the country's trajectory. Example, uh, in Germany, there are many monuments and museums to remember the horror of Holocaust. Uh, they in the schools, the students have classes on the Holocaust and subsequently their, their teachers organize visits to memorials and concentration camp. Uh, this picture is from NS document uh, Documentation Center of the city of Cologne. They have more than 25,000 pictures and more than these about uh, files and documents, so it's very interesting. And to think, until we reach the world state, we will have to see many examples of serexological self-positioning between nations, right? So it's interesting to think. Well, about polykarmic serexological self-positioning. The self-positioning, that reverberates far beyond the group karma, becoming the lucid and lucid mini piece agent of the interexistential mechanism, max mechanism. The best example that I, I know <laughs> is the, the consensiology, the structure, uh, the structure of consensiology explaining the multi-existential and multi-dimensional reality in a clear, non-dogmatic way, without sectarianism, accessible to all interest parties, presenting techniques for self-experimentation and self-testing of the consensual reality, while configuring um, Valdus polykarmic serexological self-positioning in relation to the experience in occultism since the initiation in ancient Egypt, right? So in Zephyrus book, in the Zephyrus book is amazing to see and it's clear to see this example. And uh, saving the proportions, our books are the opening of our polycarmic count, right? So let's write. <laughs> um, about dimension, uh, serexological self-positioning could be intraphysical positioning performed in the intraphysical dimension with a close multi-existential reference. An example, I thought Mills is here, right? There was, a, uh, there was a farm couple, volunteer, uh, Ai and Milsis Caldas, that had extra physical phenomena at the farm. They and their employees used to hear concierge sweeping the floor at night. So they decided to write a freedom charter. This document was read aloud and glued to the walls, telling to the concierge that they were free. After this, the phenomenon stopped. So it's very interesting. The farm was in the past, a place where runaway slaves lived uh, in communities, like uh, we call Quilombo in Brazil. So it's, um, 
you already know why I like this example, but it's a really interesting example, right? Uh, and the serexological self-positioning could be extra physical. The choice and extra physical manifestations of concepts that already have lucidity about mistakes and omissions committed in the past lives, acting to correct the path of evolution itself, is still in the extra physical dimension. It's interesting and curious one. Then uh, in the, the Zephyrus, we can see this example. Uh, the narrative in Cristo Espera por Ti, psychographed by Valdo Vieira, shows that the Balzac proposed to pay off a moral debt for having omitted in his work the immortality of the soul and the condition of the successive lives of consciousness. So, I, uh, if you want to understand deeper serexological self-positioning, uh, I invite you to read Zephyr's book because there, there, is, there are many examples like this one that is very curious and singular, right? We, uh, we don't think about our positionings in extra physical dimension. So it's interesting. At least I think. <laughs> well, about perpetuity. Pleating serexological self-positioning. Everyday positioning, acting, acting as an interstitial mini piece without deficitary omissions. Well, the trust, the alert, the argument, the agreement, the counterpoint, the debate, declaration, all the time, we have opportunities to have serexological self-positionings. So we just need to do something or do not omit about something. So it's, it's necessary uh, to position every time, right? And the long-lasting serexological self-positioning the expression of self-positioning that will be marked, registered for prosperity, that can be rescued in a future life by the consciousness itself, and that will influence many generations. So, uh, to reflection, uh, many of the published self-positionings in current life may originate from long lasting self positionings expressed in the previous life. So what we wrote in the past that now we need to rewrote, right? Rewrite, right? <laughs> With, uh, we need to, to get the possibility for promoting update of ideas and understanding rescuing those who's, uh, who were influenced and remain stuck to anachronistic ideas defended in the past. So the research, this, the retrocognitive research could help in this way. And I ask, what will you leave published in your, for your self-relay? The, the publication? Uh, is the both uh, could uh, reconsiderate, uh, reconciliate with the past and make a mark for the future, right? Up to here, is everything okay? Is there a question, Liliana? Not no? at the moment, not at the moment. Okay, so let's go ahead. Well, about themes of serexological self-positioning, which theme, which topic, which topic is uncomfortable, uncomfortable to you? Think, think why you feel uncomfortable with it. Maybe you have a tip or many tips about your holobiography, right? Here uh, we have uh, some examples 
that I put in verbat of encyc encyclopedia of conscienciology. But of course, there are many others. So I invite you to research and find your priority tenth, right? In the Serexological Self-Positioning course, we have a technique to help in this research to go deeper and identify the priority uh, topics, right? But it's-, it's let, me just, let me just use the moment to highlight. Yes. It's never too much. I'm so happy about it. But, okay. you know, the people that have not yet done the School of Consecutive Personality, I would invite okay. everyone to do it because you learn so many different techniques, yes. so many different techniques for you to approach uh, and deepen your, your self-research. And you do this self-research, not just deeper, but also within context, you understand so much more when you understand about past lives, yes. so much more about yourself. Yeah. You know, it's a much deeper study. I would yeah. invite everyone that has not yet done it to, to uh, really enroll. I agree, Liliana. Thank you. <laughs> the best, uh, the best people, uh, people to to say this is the the um, students, right? <laughs> okay. And as you could see throughout the presentation, there are many ways to express the serexological self positioning. So I put here some instruments that activity, uh, active group karmic research for recomposition and reconciliation, intra, uh, intraconsciential recycling. Do not underestimate recycling because it's the first step to do this serexological self positionings. Uh, open letters, cosmoetic activism, Exemplary, uh, exemplary intimate postures, penta, open dialogue, code of personal or duo or group, cosmoethics, uh, expansion, expression of thoughts, teaching, creditor's book, public statement, whether uh, verbal or written, public debate, all kind of publications, newspapers, pamphlets, articles, verbets, books. Well, we have a lot of instruments, tools to do it. So just do, right? Just have this serexological like, like Nike says, just do it. Yes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Just do it. <laughs> Uh, is Jacqueline here? I just have a question about one of yes. the instruments. Uh, it says here, open letters. What, yes. What's that about? Can you, can you explain, please explain? Uh, yes. Uh, let's go back to this, this example. The, uh, the, the example of Ari and Musis was an open letter. They wrote a charter and put in the in, in, glued the, in the walls uh, read aloud uh, other example in the tertulliarium uh, website there are there is the um, open uh, valdus open letter to um, how do you say in english the, um, the spiritism. spiritism the spiritism yes is the the letter that you write and public uh, do public in many ways to <coughs> with you your go public point with your self view. positioning yes yeah, you do your a self point of view that's your very self public. position yeah yeah yes it's okay okay thank you Thank you too. Can I make a question? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, ask first away. Of all, ask away. <laughs> thank you very much, Luciana. It was, thank you to be here. It's a wonderful presentation, and you uh, managed to combine a lot of concepts. Very nice. Thank I you. was waiting for this last or one of the last maybe slides. Uh, 
because I was thinking about one um, instrument which worked very, very well for me, at least, which was mm -hmm. Penta. Yes. Because when you are practicing Penta, there is no other way out <laughs> of <laughs> seriological positioning. And it yeah. reveals to you uh, many aspects of your past, the people yeah. you assist, the months coming, and so on. So yeah. I would like you to explain a bit or expand a bit about it. But the other point, as we are talking about writing, um, I, for me at least, it was very important at the very beginning of my research, I had so many ideas, so many affinities. And what helped me a lot was to write, at least in a general term, my self-biography of this life yes. because it gives many indications about our past mm -hmm. it, so my my question is is it a good uh, starting point for many people who have especially for those without much ideas about the past yeah. to base on the present uh, life to retrieve things mm -hmm. we don't pay attention small things yeah. from the childhood mm -hmm and uh, teenager time and professional and, uh, aspects and friends and so on uh, in other words all this context you showed before mm -hmm. i think they are very well expressed in our daily life in our yes uh, yeah. self biography nowadays yeah. can i add something to that ligia and luciana <laughs> Uh, okay. One of the one of the things that may may work well for that uh, that you are saying, Ligia, also is doing uh, the auto verbet. Your yes. auto verbet. Lots of ideas come to mind <laughs> that you were completely forgotten. Lots of things exactly from your childhood and yes. from your youth and this and that oh. that are very telling, and you never paid any attention. So doing so the auto verbet as a technique is also <laughs> good. It could be included here as an yes. instrument. Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. I will do it. Thank you for the tip. <laughs> but uh, yes, I agree. The autobiography is the the first step to start uh, uh, ret retrocognitive research, and uh, I invited you to do the the course in the third. Um, international uh, media, uh, week is exactly because we will have techniques like this to do this the start you know to to start the the retrocognitive uh research so it's very good and to... for those that have already started there are many other courses that consecutivos offers yes you know, let's yes. invite them to all and also <laughs> if you already start you can go deeper right in the course so it's very good and also uh about the first first question is first ask uh, about penta in the uh, penta is a both for one hand, you have many information about your past. Like you said about the public, your assistance. Uh, sometimes you have uh, red cognitive flashes. You have many informations in the Penta. And the other hand, you can assist them uh in penta right so it's it's a really good tool to do self-positioning serexological self-positioning because sometimes you don't know the person uh itself you know the groups you know the context so when you do uh this evocation and assistance by Penta, you can do many uh, assistance that you maybe you don't, you can't uh, count, you know. So it's a good, good one. And also creditor's book. It's also very interesting to do these kind of uh, positionings, right? So we have many, I many tools, many instruments. If I can add something, to... it was exactly yes. during Penta or right after after it that uh, the name came of the 
of the personality that uh, that I am researching. You are researching. I had no idea. You know, it, it just came during Penta, the name. You know, that was very special, obviously. But mm -hmm. you know, it was very special. It was a gift. Yes. <laughs> but, yes. You know, it's very interesting. Uh, the things okay. that can happen during Penta. Yes. Thank you. Well, okay. I have Can another question. If... Yes, okay. So, Luciana, I think your, your presentation is wonderful. It really gives Thank an you. overview <laughs> about all of the details of self-positioning. I would like to know the opposite. <laughs> if there are circumstances or cases in which the best thing, at least at that moment, is not to do a self-positioning, is not to really but... go there and, and, and tell the world or whatever the, the, the multidimensionality about something. So yes, are there certain circumstances where the best thing to do is to shut your mouth up and yes. just don't tell anything <laughs> or don't say anything? Um, yes, of course. Uh, well, when you omit, is an uh, is an opposition is a position right mm -hmm. so we need to understand about the uh depth or uh, omission and mm -hmm. superavity mm -hmm. omission so when you do a superavity omission you are you are positioning himself right it is a self right? position and you're right about it, it, it is a self positioning right but which circumstances so, do you think it would be the case in which the best thing is to wait a little bit or to not say anything? Well, I think we have two things to, to think. One, if your temperament, temperament is more uh, positioning or mm -hmm. not, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you are more positioning, you need to think more about the omissions, the okay. yeah. superavity omissions, right? Mm -hmm. And if the, the temperament is more omissionary, you need to think more uh, <laughs> positioning, the, you know. Right, right, the other way <laughs> is, around. Yeah. Is the, the one thing to think. And the other, I think the, um, oh, how do you say this? <laughs> Sinaletica. Signals, um, signals. signals. Yeah, signals. Yes, I think the, the second way is um refine your signals right so personal signals so maybe you have um a point a signal to to tell you if it's the case or not to positioning or do a, a superavity uh omission right do I you have an example in which for example the bad thing would be to not uh, open up a situation, what would be the case, for example, is... I think each well, case not, is, a, is a different case, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I, I just, I yeah. just yeah. wanted to know if you... If you and there are still many people... There are still uh, many people in the CCCI that don't want uh, to touch uh, seriexology and, and stuff like that. And they yeah. are, I don't know, that, maybe that, they are yeah, afraid, that. maybe they are... I don't know, <laughs> you know. Well, but but it's... Of, I'm thinking about a condition, for example, uh, an infiltrator. Right. Sometimes a ethical infiltrator, it requires yeah. a non yeah, good. self or ex explicit yeah. That's a great example, yeah. self conditioning. Yeah. And an extreme example would be a serenissimus. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Then we, we, memory, yeah. we deal with the serenissimus at some point in our life and we don't realize it. Yeah. So, just there's also two subjects that I think that are interesting to study in this case, which is one is the what we call in, in Portuguese the bregue, when when the person mm -hmm. has a has that sort of scolding right in the in the, in the intermissive. And the other thing is exactly this case of uh, uh, being an infiltrate. These two things, I think, deserve a lot of attention because maybe we realize that to a more uh, greater or less extent, uh, greater or less percentage, we are all infiltrated sometimes, mm -hmm. and and then we are all, all had probably some scolding. 
yeah, yeah, but yes. but there is some some cases they are much more mundane, like the, to choose the best timing. Yes. For example, right? I, I've, mm -hmm. uh, sometimes it's not even a, a case that is so big, but uh, how to choose the best time to tell or to say or to make it public. I mm -hmm. think that is a, an important uh, What element does Pedro think about it? Yes. Yeah. Can we can <laughs> have <his> contribution? I, <laughs> sorry. I remember the, the Valdus example. He waited uh, decades to to bring up the Zephyrus case. Right, right. So he waited to, in order to him to have uh, authority to to bring that information to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of this, this, I don't know how to say variable. Variable, the, yeah. Variable is uh, the person has to has to to have this authority in order to to say if he or she was né, something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the past. Yeah, so that, I remember that this case. Very Thank nice. you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. It's made me think in a varia uh, variable, variable, no. Variable, yes? variable. A new a variable. variable. Because... A new variable. Thank you. <laughs> I think I think this this is a book. In the, the yes. The presentation is a book, right? It needs to have yes. a chapter in which look, <laughs> yes. There is a timing. <laughs> she is, she is writing you. a book, right? Yes. Right, this subject. Right, right. <laughs> there is another. There is another thing that I, I remember when the when the information will cause of somehow um, damage damage not for the person but for but the other her, her <laughs> sister or her. Someone in the in the in her group. The, so, the repercussion of in the group. Yes, the yeah, repercussion. The repercussion yes. Yeah. That's it. But sometimes we don't know uh, about the repercussion. Yes, the yes, repercussion, right? Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. the problem. It's exactly <laughs> exactly what we will discuss. <laughs> because there are always no. repercussions, right? There's always Personal an impact. Group Look. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I th thank you very much. This discuss was very nice to me. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> and talking about the impact of the sexological self positioning, um, it's uh, we need to, uh, to think because the positioning generates impact both for the person himself, herself, and for all the other people who were involved in the same issue, right? So uh, ego karmically speaking, it promotes the personal evolutionary record. Uh, group karmically speaking, it uh, provides reconciliation, reiteration, recomposition, and reciprocity. Polykarmically speaking, it accelerates our evolutionary process. So we'll never have an idea about the impact of our positionings if we don't actually do them, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, thinking about this, uh, these impacts, I, I like so much the is Missionian example, right? For those, who's, uh, for those who live in the United States, can you imagine what kind of education and culture, cultures they would have without the Smithsonian? Uh, even who were, uh, have been in, in Washington DC could think about it. The Smithsonian is composed by 19 museums and seven research centers. Uh, it has 142 million objects in its collection. It was founded in 1846 for the increase and diffusion of knowledge. 
this institution uh, is named by honor of founding um, donor James Ismission. He was a British science scientist who donated all his money and artifacts in he donated us a last will to the US government, even without ever having stepped into the country. But why I like this example? Because at that time, the Congress way, uh, was not sure if it would use the money to really found a research institution. So, if John Quincy Adams, the ex-president of the United States, who was congressman at that time, did not have positioned himself and fought for that uh, his mission wanted, the money could have been spent on other issues or could not even stay in the United States. So thinking about the, the positionings, it's interesting we think what we do and the repercussion that we, uh, these positionings, right? And maybe we never thought about if about this, this possibility of this Missionian, if the positionings were not happened. So it's interesting to, to think about it. And sexologically thinking about his mission and uh, Quincy positionings, we could ask why did Quincy and his mission get involved together in this particular issue? What could have been their motivations? One is from uh, England and well, uh, gave all the money to a, to a a country that he never stepped there. And which kind of connection could have existed between both in the past? Well, serexological research is very thought provoking, at least for me, right? And um, about impact of serexological self-positioning, I leave here some readings and movies suggestions. Um, the other Schindler's is very in interesting book talking about the people that ch uh, choose to save Jews in the Holocaust. Like I said before, the Lost Museum, Zephyrus, uh, Bury the Chains is very nice and talk about the social movement of the England abolition, abolitionist uh, slaves, social movement. Um, the, the, the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. I don't know if, if you already watch, but it's very, very interesting to think the consequence of your choice. It's a good one. And the end of the sixth happiness, sixth happiness, it's good, it's a good move also, right? Well, up to here, I hope you are already agree with the serexological self-positioning is priority condition to intermissivists looking for group karmic recomposition and maximizing the assistance throughout the existential series. So, next steps, well, my next steps in this, in this uh, research. Many I'm... of us, many of us, that's the idea, you know, let's I'm recording the, the Serexological Self-Positioning course that my intention is make it available in, also in English. Uh, today we had an overview about the theme, the topic. 
some examples, but in the course we have more examples and techniques to go deeper in self-research to have conscious serexological self-positionings. And my next goal is finish the writing book and publish, right? Also in Portuguese and English, please. <laughs> yes, I, I hope so. <laughs> And I hope I have inspired you to write your own self-positionings, right? <laughs> Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Luciana. This was great. Uh, Thank we you. are still open for questions. We still yes. have a little few minutes. Yes, I will stop here to Thank see everybody. <laughs> okay. There you go. Good to Thank see everyone. You. All, 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 yes. Luciana, Thank muito much. obrigada. <laughs> Thank you. Amei, amei. I love to see you here. This music is the chapter, <laughs> open chapter, <laughs> freedom <laughs> chapter. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. So, any question? Is everything okay? Reynald is also here. You. Show yourself, Reynald. Yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. My examples are here. I'm very <laughs> happy. <laughs> Thank you. Very good, very good. And well, also... You, you, you uh, just freeze our responsibility, Luciana. Yes. About, about <laughs> these examples. <laughs> but you know, uh, do this lecture is a self position, uh, serexological self positioning for me, you know. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Thank it's you. Really, it's really great. <laughs> I'm so glad that you took the challenge. Uh, thank you. So I'm very glad good. To... So very good. Yes. <laughs> you help me a lot. <laughs> Always there for you. No worries. Thank okay. you. Okay. Any other questions? Maybe we can talk a little more about the International Week, mm. the, the course that you are going to give. Are yeah, there are course. there any little little snippets yeah. of things that you can I'm say? I'm sending the, the link course? right now. Yes, Weber, please open your microphone. <laughs> give us a little something about the course so that people yeah. get you know start enrolling sometime yeah. soon it's uh, the idea of the course it's an introductory course you know uh we have lots of uh, techniques that we uh, develop during the uh school of uh, consecutive personality and we try to uh, pick up some uh, fundamental techniques and fundamental ideas uh, to bring into a practical course so it's a kind of an introductory course, but it will give us a very practical approach. And I think you, you know, everything that uh, assists the course will benefit from it. So it, everyone is invited. Yeah. For sure. Thank you, Beb. Thank you for sharing. Thank you, Emma. So that's okay. it. Okay. Everyone, that's it for uh, from us. <laughs> if there are no more questions, you know, thank you for all, all, to all of you for coming. It was really lovely to see so many of you here. And uh, we will have uh, another session, another masterclass in two uh, months' time with Diana Rosser, who is also here somewhere, I saw. <laughs> yes. So Diane will be presenting uh, in June, at the end of June. So see you, everyone. Thank you for coming. And thank you again, thank Luciana. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. See you soon.